Hello, and welcome to The Murder. Today we're talking to an amazing set of musicians with Moon Hat, a band out of Albuquerque. They got funky meets booty kind of jazz coming out of these guys. It's like a funkalation. It's beautiful. This thing, the, the style of these guys, it stands all on its own. We talk music, we talk the funk scene in Albuquerque, and we're on location in downtown Albuquerque at KD Neely Studio at 4th and Central. You guys definitely have to stop by and support some of the charitable campaigns that KD does and give them back to the community. Thank you again for letting us do that there, Katie. We really appreciate it. Check out Mr. Cookie Jones, Nicole Soul, and Zoom himself and the rest of their band live at one of the funky venues they play at ReverbNation.com forward slash Moonhat. Check what APOB is doing at AperturBirds.com. And you guys can also check out our merch shop we just opened at Shop.Spreadshirt.com forward slash APOB Media. You guys got to check out some of the shirts, the sweaters, all kinds of nefarious gear representing APOB you can check out on there. Yeah, so let us know what you guys think. And please, if you guys if you guys really want to help us out, beyond the the love that we get on social media, thank you guys. You guys know who you are for doing that. Gary Green, I see you out there, dog. If you guys leave us a review, just leave us a review anywhere. If you do it on iTunes, Google Music, anywhere that you can drop a review, just on one of our episodes, we're not asking for five stars. We're just asking for that review. Get out there and do some reviewing all the stars you want or half stars, whatever we get. All right, kick this thing off, Spider. So we're live. We're here at KD Neely off of 4th and Central between Copper and 4th. Did I get it right? I got it right? Copper and Central. I don't know. You know what? I'm from Las Lunas. It's horrible. I'm not, I'm not like very good at coming up with it. Uh, and we are here at KD Neely Art Gallery. And this is beautiful. We're looking at the, uh, it's the Veterans uh, Project that we have out. Tell me what it is. It's called the Face Palm Patriots Exhibition. We did a fundraiser for Heroes Walk Among Us. They help get homeless vets off the streets and help veterans improve their lives. I'm Katie Neely. I own the gallery, and I'm an artist. All right. Right Shout out. Thank you very much. We love the place. It's very beautiful. Thank you, Katie. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having us here. Uh, and we're here with Moon Hat. How are you guys doing today? Doing good. good. Great. Yeah, you guys, I can hear you guys very well. We're coming in five by five. You guys want to introduce yourselves? Okay. I'm Zoom. Play drums. That's me. Zoom. I love it. I'm Cookie. I play guitar and keyboards and sing. And sing. Yeah. Seem like a boss, man. Love and he it. writes the songs. He forgot to mention that part. All of them? Yeah. Damn. <laughs> All right. Cool. Cookie. Yeah. I didn't know that. Man. That's deep. <laughs> yeah. Nicole, I play bass. Play ba yeah, you play that funky bass. I was telling her she could play a corn song with her <laughs> eyes closed, man. Just the way you, the way you slap on the buzz. It's very beautiful. I like it. So what what uh, style of music do you guys play? Moon Hat. You guys, you guys play something very particular, I think. We call it music booty jazz. Music. It's like, you know, <laughs> it has a little bit of spontaneous, like with the, the horns, but the essence of it is funk, funk for the itself. dance floor. Okay. And, yeah. and, and you guys are not just the three of you. You are how many? No, we're, we can be up to nine pieces at a time. Okay. And okay, so depends on if the horn players show up. What are the instruments we usually get in there? I mean, people are going to, of course, want to hear the music, and we'll have that in the description of the podcast. You guys right can on. directly hear it. And please do. Please click on the links. But what do you, what do you guys have as instruments, uh, erstwhile? Bass, drums, guitar, keyboards, three horn players, two sax, and trumpet player. Damn. Yeah. On the CD, on the CD, we have a harmonica player named Vicente. They played on the CD, and we have some other horn players. Um, Dustin Hunter who plays sax on that one, and Matt Brewer, who played trombone. They're no longer with us, but they're Essen Illumini of the band. Okay. They played on the CD. I like how you put that. Essen, say it again, Essence Illumini? Essence Illumini. Man, that's why you got the, <laughs> the that, that smooth as butter, man. Like, you just put that together like you're yeah. singing right now. I love it. So the album's called Crash, Boom, Bang, Moon Hat. And it's, yeah. it's purple, so I want you guys to check that out. You guys are all over Amazon, and then we're... we're on Amazon, Spotify. Spotify! Stuff okay. like that. Right on. Cool. So, so YouTube. how did you guys? How, so, how did this begin? Who was you said it was the uh, uh, the alumni? There was some, probably less members when you guys started out. Or Actually, was all we're probably the the core of, okay. of the beginning of the band. Okay, you know, we've been around the longest, I imagine. So, yeah. what would be the long? How long when did you guys start? About 2013. 2013. Damn. Yeah. Okay. So, you guys have been at it a while. And Which, then, yeah. when you guys play, what do you typically play? Like the the venues. Who who likes to pick up that funk sound? We got Saint Clair. Got La Cumbre. Marble. Marble. Yeah. So we did have the La Cumbre for a minute. We got the city, too. 
Yeah, the city the city likes the funk. City of Albuquerque. Oh, really? Okay. So yeah. you guys play yeah. like like employee stuff, like Christmas parties or something. No, like no, that? like festivals. Sure. You know? Okay. So because outside it's good to dance. Oh yeah. So. Oh yeah. If there's alcohol involved, it's always <laughs> it just <laughs> right? helps. It doesn't hurt anything. That's awesome. Okay, and then. So when you guys started to to get down, you guys were initially playing funk right off the bat. It wasn't uh, it wasn't something that you guys had to like just start playing and then it just no. came out of it. it you guys just, we, we for started with songs it. and everybody brings what they bring. Got you. I might suggest something, you know, if I don't like it, I show it. <laughs> <laughs> no, really. That's well, shit, you, wrote, you wrote it. <laughs> you wrote it, man. I Sometimes, hope you, like you know, it, but I, I really like when people can, you know, bring their own sure. to the songs. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Instead of, Cause it's not really a band if I'm doing telling everybody what to do. Sure. I mean, if you actually wrote every bit of every bit of it, yeah. right? Right. It right. He's gonna give good. us an idea or even a specific baseline at one point in the song and another part of the song. It's an idea that just develops. Sure. You know, as the song well, develops. Yeah. Like we call them tangents. That's what yeah. we'd always because it would be yeah. like you get to this point, and you're like, what do we do? Well, why don't we change it? Oh mm-hmm. shit, dude, that sounds good. And nothing's written in concrete. You know, something can start out a month ago and in the a few months later turn into something more beautiful you know because you you know you're you're, con- you're like working on it you know so songs can evolve too you know so sometimes totally. we'll run into something on stage that's that'll right. find its way into the song and that's it's like it. oh we oh, like we could. yeah it's yeah, like yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. i call yeah. it the muse visiting so, you know what i'm saying the muse right. finds you I'm like zoom do the that music again. starts playing uh, yeah right <laughs> which is crazy because sometimes it it's again. just a one-time it's thing improv. you know <laughs> yeah just happen in the moment totally in the moment well how yeah. okay so when you guys when you guys go to play it's the three of you guys that are the core so you guys kind of take the lead like we're gonna write a new song or like how does a band practice no everybody's work? involved with writing yeah, the song totally. horn okay. players have their input singers Definitely. get their input yeah michael christmas does a lot of horns arrangements is yeah yeah he's the the horn lead it's an amazing name michael christmas right Just, uh, <laughs> right and he's new mexico born raised that's awesome and mm-hmm. so so let's get to that you guys you guys are all from here i am not originally from here i'm born and raised here you're born and raised here yeah okay. i was okay. born here raised in houston in houston okay interesting and then when did you come back mm, when i was like around 13 yeah okay yeah, I did some. It's I, been a man, many a moons ago. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Do you guys ever get uh, any sort of like touring stuff, going back to hometown kind of situations at all? I would like to get out to to Texas and play. Sure, it'd be nice. I've gone to uh, South Padre a couple of times. We have a uh, the place I work for. I have a hospital that's down in Brownsville, which is real close to oh, wow. the border. Yeah, no, Cor- so, Corpus Christi and all that. Yeah, we have one in Corpus Christi as well. Nice. Um, so uh, is it still there? It is. Yeah. It's yeah. not run by alligators. <laughs> it, you know, they have a much better beachfront property now. It's closer. You yeah, know, man. It's <laughs> just open up a big old sea park. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Well, Houston is supposed to be the one that got. Yeah. Was it Houston that got jacked, right? Yeah. That was who got jacked, and they're still like recovering out of I have all that. some family out there. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because yeah. there were some people that work at the uh, the place you know that I work for. They were talking about that, that there was family and yada, yada. Corpus actually got water up into the building, and they had to evacuate all the you know sick people. And yeah, man, it's it's bad. it was bad. It's bad, it's bad yeah. man. You know? So, well, it, damn, it took a negative ass turn, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, this uh, is not live streaming. Yeah, no. Mother <laughs> Nature digs the phone. Yeah. So yeah. That's all it goes. yeah, that's it. Well, and, and you know, and out of that, I would say that there's probably going to be some some sort of uh, uh, you know something positive. There has to be. Oh you man, know. strong people. That's it. You know, you know what I'm saying it showed the essence of what we we truly can be together. You know, yeah. People just doing things out of compassion and taking themselves out the equation. You know what I mean? Sure. Where it's just like I'm gonna help, and it, I'm not like trying to sure. get likes or yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, you're just doing well. It that you that's know, in your a... spirit. It told you, you know what? I'm gonna help. You know, not because you're black or white, just because this is what we should be doing right now. Yeah, that's the right thing to do because yeah. it's the right thing. So to it do. is. I think there's a lot of beautiful things to learn from that experience too. You know, out of disaster, you. You know, some flowers grow through the concrete. You know what I'm saying? That's huge for you to say that, man. Yeah. Uh, that's that's kind of like what Katie does over here. Get your uh, that's what we the, all should you be work doing, with you community know? to try to bring <laughs> everybody up together. I really appreciate that. So we got people here in Albuquerque doing yeah, the same man. thing. You know, that's, that's what we should be striving for. You the know? more Katies we got, you know, the more Houston's we got. You know. <laughs> so with that being said, you guys don't haven't you haven't done any tours or anything like that? Like no, no. Okay, you guys want to? I mean, is that yes. like something? Yeah, yeah. Okay, that would be a goal to like maybe get out on the road this summer. For a couple of weeks, make it like a really cool celebration. Sure. Maybe up to Denver. That'd Ooh. be that'd be nice. Do like the do the the Southwest Corridor, the Oregon, the whole the whole. I just want to go know? anywhere. I'm not going to drown or <laughs> fall off a cliff or something. Sure, you know right. Uh, uh, God, well, ain't it safe, man? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, think that, I think Denver is a has a great you know audience for listening. 
And we like, need to though. Yeah, for yeah, listening. Was, yeah. We need that's the momentum of I think we need to do yeah. sure. just to get out of town and well, play. And we talked about this earlier. Like I do you guys feel like the the shows are more where um making an actual career, like a living now, like making money out of being a musician is is going is to do that. Because you said it was easier to sell the shows because of the experience, right? Because they really see how you guys play totally. the little nuances of improv on the spots that mm-hmm. are needing mm-hmm. it or you mm-hmm. feel it, you know? Mm-hmm. And it, yeah. it builds, you know, it builds and it, uh, you never, you don't know what's going to happen. Sure. Yeah. So I think Red Rocks. I just want to yeah. get out of Albuquerque and play somewhere else. Yeah, no, I think that's a great idea. Sure. Yeah. But, okay, so do you guys have like, you, I heard you mentioning some bands when we were talking about doing the uh, the Alien Pajama Party. Oh, yeah, the Alien <laughs> Funk Friday, Friday Night Pajama <laughs> Party. You know, it's just a concept. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was visited. That's awesome. Just by some aliens who gave me some chiclets and they told me, you know what, man? <laughs> <laughs> you need to have a Friday night fish fry funk pajama party. I was like, well, everybody Hell don't yeah. like fish. Why don't we just have a party? You know what I'm saying? You know? Actually, I wouldn't mind some fried catfish myself, so we, we did get some catfish before they took about that home. Or <laughs> but anyway, I thought it'd be fun, you know, an all-ages type of thing and Get the, everybody has to dress up funky and like an alien in them pajamas. Yeah, so and look, all you people that sleep that. in your birthday suit, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we roll with that, man. you know. I think it'd be fun. And I'm in, I like experiences, man, you know. I think it'd be cool to do something like that and film it and then just have fun, maybe have a few bands. Sure. And, you know. And try to just, try to switch yeah, it up, have a funk yeah, night, man. man That's so cool. A, it would be fun, you know. So, and so I, I need to get some pajamas, though. I have to, maybe I can get some you know, alien pajamas made somewhere. There you go. Just don't make them like rubber. You might get hot in them. And yeah, you got to make know, sure. So you got to be able to breathe. You can't yeah, be passing you know, out on stage. And it's got to be like a good wickable fan. <laughs> yeah. So we're thinking about maybe having something like that in the future so look out that, for I that. I think it would like be fun. Candy. You know, it's a vision. You know, I have a lot of visions. We'll see. Yeah. Make medication's helping though. You know? <laughs> Did you take them today? Yeah, well, you know, you got the gardening helps to curbs the urge to, you know, kill and stuff. There you go. <laughs> I'm just playing. That's good. Oh, cool. So, so do you guys have uh with with that? Do you guys have a lot of bands that you could hit up and be like, hey, let's do like a alien funk tour, man. Let's do something like cross country, you know, just uh, you know, even if it's two weeks. Do you is, oh, do you man, find I other never bands that about do it? doing it like that? That's a whole other thing. Man. I don't I don't know, man. It's a lot of cool bands, but you know, trying to go on the road is expensive. And, Absolutely. You know, well, you that's know. cool. Well, keep us a. a it could be a that, cool man. thing though. I yeah. think it'd be better just to do it in one place and film it. And, you know, do it more like that because that way, because, you know, when you start touring, you got gas and breakdowns. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Switching out U-Hauls. So let let me ask you guys this. So you guys have done this one album or you've done more before? This is it? Well, he, he, his music, Cookie's music uh, goes back a number of albums. But for Moon Hat as the band Moon Hat, this is the first one. Okay. So yeah. Zoom recorded an album with Chuck Holly. Yeah. Oh, it was wow. an awesome Chuck guitarist, Holly. vocalist yeah. here in town. Yeah. That's yeah. how Kevin and I met. Was, yeah. Uh, yeah. He played bass, I played drums. Okay. Yeah. So it ended up being the, uh, a growth from that. That's cool. And apparently yeah. it's, it's been growth. badass. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's been good so far, yeah. man. Just don't turn cancer. Yeah, funk fungus. <laughs> <laughs> there was some funk going around and we jumped on the bandwagon. Just don't forget to use the ointment. No. <laughs> 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 Rub it in twice, not three times. You're playing with yourself. <laughs> 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 no, I was, it's funny because you know we started thinking about things. You know, like you know, how long have we been? Oh, I know. Yeah, I know. We're like what? Yeah, when wow. did this start? Yeah. When we did that, you know, what we can't remember. Yeah. <laughs> so when you guys go to a studio, I saw that you guys went into uh, you guys see oh, where do we where do we where did you guys actually do this? We did Sean it at Smock. Sean Smock's house, who's a bass player in band with no name, another mm-hmm. local band that's really yeah, that's badass. So slamming so, hip hop. Mm-hmm. So so that method you guys said where all you guys are there is that how you guys also when you do an album like how do you get into that that jive for for making an album is there like i mean is it like lock yourselves in there get it done come back out you know like no, we kind of do, it, we kinda do it in pieces we go in and pieces. lay the cake and then we bring in everybody <laughs> okay. else to put right right and the and horns went okay yeah, another we did day the rhythm the section singers first went. and then brought everybody yeah. else yeah. Yeah. and then you guys are uh build you, it from the foundation you guys do it individually when you record you guys we did, play the, like we did the rhythm big. section, a lot of songs all together. We did yeah. The, yeah. the basic tracks. Okay. And then yeah. we brought in the horns the and did the vocals. Simultaneously. That's badass. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. Okay. So you guys had, had uh, good luck making that album. So you're working on one now? Yeah. Okay. It's called Oodles of Woes. Oodles mm-hmm. of Woes. I want it to be a double album because I'm crazy. <laughs> I would like it to be 16 songs. Okay. And it probably won't come out to 2047. But um, <laughs> I don't know. I'm blessed to write. So, There's so many songs. There's so many songs. Like, we just be nice to get them to 
to do the ones yeah. that are for this band. So are you like are you like Prince, man? Do you have like a like a man? I'm a, a purple disciple. I ain't gonna front. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? He's one of the, him and Rick James are the reason I probably play music as Sly Stone. That's George badass, Clinton man. is my idol. And sure. Oh, you can hear that Ohio, just seeping out of your guys' music, though, man. It just seeps yeah. out of your music, you know, especially oh, your vocals. Man. Like, it just, it, it comes across the bass is so funky, and then there's not many guys that can do what you can do still, Mr. Zoom, because that's, I, I know that that's a different level. You know, I, we used to play in a metal band, so it was double bass, and it was, you know, I feel like the rhythm that you play is much more, um, you can fuck up when you're playing a fast metal song, I think, by yeah. a beat or two, but right. you can't mess up, man. Like my co-host who's not here today, Fox, but uh, he, he, he's a drummer as well. His dad came from a funk background, right. playing at churches, doing a lot of gospel stuff. Oh, Still cool. does, plays for a church, plays for Cal- Calvary, uh, C- Calvary nice. in Berlin. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but it's just, it's a totally different animal. And I didn't know that, you know, whole, um, you know, I see it from an outsider's point of view. I'm not a drummer by, you know, at all, but you can just totally see the difference. And, you know, we'd watch our, our metal drummer drumming. And like I said, he could, he could mess up a, you know, a blast beat and you may hear it, but you probably won't, you know, unless you're recording it, but to do something like you're doing every beat counts, especially when you're recording like for an album. I'm yeah. Sure, you're really under the microscope, man. It shows up right away. If you, if you mess up. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and Toki's pretty mean, so I try yeah. not to mess up anyway. I am. I, I <laughs> can't. I do get, Zoom I give dirty, I what? give dirty looks, man. I ain't going front. I'm working <laughs> yeah. on it. But I'm like, you know what? You just, he's, he's working. <laughs> you know, there's two sides <laughs> of cookie. There's, there's <laughs> this guy who's, who's great to be around. And, <laughs> and then when I'm locked, and when, I don't take when I'm in the studio, <laughs> man, it's a whole different story. Ooh. That That's the genius of work though, right? No, yeah. but there, no I'm kidding. <laughs> no, but to, to, to do all those beats, and not it, it's like it's like they're complicated and yet you don't even necessarily realize what's going on you know because it's all about supporting such a, a lot of different voices sure you know and so everybody has to create leave space for everyone else with so many people on stage sure. you know i mean auditorily right so it, you, it, not every drummer is like <laughs> it's like whoa right. dude you're not leaving space for everybody Zoom leaves space, and he's he's yeah. It you, works. You, you it understand works. the essence of silence and pause. <laughs> it's only, yeah, it works. You know, you know, sometimes the beats you don't play are just as important. You know? That's awesome. That's well yeah. said, man, for sure. That's going to be like a quote on the media release coming. <laughs> <laughs> that was perfect, man. So, so when you guys do this, you're doing your 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 tracks. Uh, how long does it take you to make an album like that? I mean, I know you've only done one, but. Uh, you're working on another you guys play like hell i'm sure does it is it like oh i messed up oh i messed up this is trash like la bamba you know he's singing that no we kind of like, like go with you know <laughs> it's if like, we get a good take we roll with that one you sure, know what i'm saying like move. if we i don't know if you do something more than two or three times in the studio it just seems to lose the flavor you know hopefully we get a good drum take and we've been trying to play with a click track so that's a little harder was to a click, have this click track something to just hold it together and it never slips away you know that, huh, okay you know mm-hmm. And so, Although there's points when it, I think that that's what's so great about live music is where it's naturally going to shift slightly dependent on the room, you know, what's happening in the room, what's happening with the dancers, with the flavor, you know, sure. it's going to shift. Right, right. You know. So so I feel like that kind of comes out of your guys' music, though, the way that it sounds like it sounds very like you guys are. I, the way I equated it to is you're like freestyling, like you're playing on a stage, but you guys are doing it so well. It's incredible. That was the thing that drew me to you guys' music right off the bat when he sent it to me. Mr. Spider over here, a producer who's also on, on site. Spider! But uh, <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> when he, that's the spider, yes, sir. Uh, but uh, but when, when he first sent it to me, I was like, damn, this is polished as hell. Like, it sounds good. Like, the way that it comes across, but it sounds like you would be... It's the way you play together. It sounds live. You know what I mean. So kudos on that. So your writing process sounds like it emulates what you guys do on stage. You're, it's a, it's a, it is a vision of what you guys really want it to sound like. Then, because that's cool. So I'm looking for oodles and oodles of woes. Oodles of woes. That's amazing. Is it like <laughs> blues as well, man? That sounds. No, very- <laughs> no, no. It's just like you know, look around you. There's a lot of crap. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. So let's speak to that. Do you feel like your music brings positivity compared to um, like some some other stuff that wouldn't be quite so much? Like, do you think that you're seeked out for venues when they hear your stuff to, because it sounds so positive and all the noise is? I don't on know if they days? get that far into it. I think they might just go. I like the way that sounds. I don't know. I think if you're really seeking that, you'll find that. You know, I think the essence of who, what I who I am is in there. Yeah. But it's not so much as being preachy, but it is my view of sure. what I see out there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because you know. I kind of grew up in the church and it's a different kind of 
you view the world different if you grow up in that environment. And you said you've been playing since you were how old? Like 13. 13, and you got yeah. your start like in the churches, right? Yeah, we're talking about church and playing at home, you know. That's awesome, man. Yeah. So did you ever play for the church? Like in, in I played I played guitar a little bit in church and sang a little bit. Okay. But mostly I'm self-taught. I used to just sit at the piano when I was a little boy and... You know, it's very Jimi Hendrix just, of you, man. Just play. <laughs> Damn. Just play, man. Can you, just can play you close it. your eye and do the, do the just, cover just, your face? It just be getting down, and my mom will walk in the room, what the hell is going on? And she's like, that's you. you know, <laughs> that's, that's awesome. How I, it started, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So. And did you, did you, when you started doing that, it was just you, and then when did you start your first band? Like, get into something. I think I started, I was always trying to start a band since <laughs> I was like eight years old, you know? <laughs> and when I was going to school in Houston, all the kids just called me P-Funk, because yeah. I used to, I was into the funk, you know, yeah. when I was like 10 and 11. I, it's funny looking back on that because I, you know, all my friends, that's what we were into. Sure. And it, know, that it, was when the mothership was 1977. I'm old, man. <laughs> that's man. when the mothership and all that stuff was happening. Star Wars was happening. Right, right. You know, so it was like when all that stuff was coming along. Sure. And it just had a big influence it on was a lot the of culture. rock music, man. It's, sure. It was a big, I grew up on this show called the Don Kirshner Rock Concert. And that's where I got the essence of different music. Like you would see the Ohio players on there and then you would see Thin Lizzy or Alice Cooper and you would get your mind blown every Saturday because you're like, because I didn't know, you know? Yeah, you know, and I remember that. the first time I saw Bob Marley on that show. Oh my God. And I was just like, I didn't know what trans were. Yeah. I thought, oh my God, he's got snakes in his hair. <laughs> you know, it was, you know, but you yeah. know, I was growing and, you know, he, you know, and it was it was cool because I got to be influenced by a lot of different music from that show. Sure, you and, know, and and then do you think that that influenced you with the uh, gospel and stuff? And that, man, you, did you ever try anything else? Like, was it always just funk? No, I grew up playing in in high school, playing in rock bands and and being told, man, yeah, I used to sing That's in the cool. band. We used to do Van Halen, Errol Smith, and all kind of stuff. I, I like played uh, Led Zeppelin. We did Led Zeppelin. Of and, course, you ever heard of Honey? Was it um, Honeymoon Suite? I got a new girl now. So, oh, oh, no, man. All See, now, old stuff. I, I gotta look it up. <laughs> Everybody's gonna be out there they looking used to it up. Tell right me, now. They used to tell me, because you're trying not to sing so black. Oh, <laughs> oh shit. It was funny, Jeez, man. It was man. really, it was because it's, it's different, man, because I didn't grow up like playing with a lot of brothers, you know? Yeah. Everybody I was grew up was, we were trying to be, Eddie, they were trying to be Eddie Van Halen, you know? Got you. Okay. There was only one funk band, at, me and Jack Betty's, another local mm, bad ass. Yeah. yeah. Jack yeah. Betty's? Jack Bailey. Bailey. Jack Bailey. Okay. Yeah. That's he cool. plays in a group called Soul Divine. Mm. Okay. They're awesome. They'll mm. probably be playing somewhere in New Year's, but he's a big influence on me, man, because when I was trying to cope, I was always, Jack, let me play with you guys. And he's like, get out of here, kid. You yeah. Know? <laughs> but then they kind of like took me, it was him and this other guy named Charles. They took me under the wing, you know, and I kind of was, they cut my teeth with them. We had a band called Clockwork, and we did all the funk. Like, we we did the Time, Prince, and sure, sure. Vanity Six. We, you know, right. we were like Minneapolis, you know what right. I'm saying? We did some Rick so, James. So when you guys started doing this stuff, did did any of it, like, did you see the, the future? Like, you, I'm going to be a musician, man. Like, Oh, man. From the time I was singing when I was five years old, I just felt like this is what I want to do. That's awesome. Man. I still had that same feeling in my heart when I wake up every morning. You know, it's so like do, calls to me. Do you do anything else? Like, do you have like I work, a nine to five? Okay. Job. Yeah. Okay. No, I didn't know. I mean, because because we did a podcast on Gato Malo, Felix y los Gatos. Shout oh, yeah, out, Felix. shout out. And that dude, I was like, hey, so what do you, you know, what's like your nine to five? He's like, no. I was like, oh, I no. wish. You, you know, know what? I would like to get to that point. Sure. I wish Moon Hat could get to the point where we could at least go to Europe or do something really beautiful, like sure. have an experience. Yeah, you know, where we. Man. Go somewhere and take our Strawberry kids and just it'd be fun, forever. you know. Put everybody to work. Have yeah. my kids haul on my guitar, you know. <laughs> you know, make it a family thing. You, you know are the crew. Come on, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no. payment. No, you're funny. <laughs> you got food, didn't you? <laughs> oh, that's that's what I would like to do. That's what I would like to do. That's cool. Yeah. So, so do you feel like you guys are working towards that now? Are you guys engaging this this more, trying to get out there? So, I think the summer. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. This summer we're gonna we're gonna get well, any, probably around all the states around Albuquerque, New Mexico. Anything that moves forward, you guys definitely pass it my way, so that way we totally. can put it on a perch of birds. I want I want people yeah. to be able to see it, catch it, and and come out and support no, you this guys. This is awesome, man. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely, man. Well, thank you guys for you know bringing the mics. I forgot. <laughs> Freaking mics, man. I'm so mad at us. <laughs> we have some other members of our three singers, Marilyn, Amy, and Mary. They're they've been with us almost a year now, mm -hmm. and yeah. they're awesome, man. They're, they're really cool. I love to meet everybody, man. Yeah. If you guys are all like-minded, I feel like we're all going to get along. So. You know? We'll yeah, yeah. Have the whole crew. We'll yeah. have to have like 14 interfaces and five <laughs> producers, three engineers. 
Yeah. You know, <laughs> be a guy in the back answering the phone. No, we're doing a podcast. Go away. <laughs> we'll just have the band play at the next live podcast. We'll just make it a yeah. first of the birds, first concert. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Hey, we're working for towards real. it, man. Oh, yeah. No, well, we would like to do awesome, a comedy man. show as well with music. I want to try to do something different, man. That's something mm. I want to try. Yeah. You know, who does that? Right. Yeah, you don't have uh, laughs anymore. Laughs, right? That was the joint that was down here. Yeah. I was never that's of nice. age. That would be cool, man. That would be cool to do like See? a when podcast where you have a band in and have that would be awesome and you guys are in that style that's what i'm saying like there's you couldn't play like the music we used to play uh spider and i and some other folks we couldn't play shit like there was nobody that would pick you up at like a coffee brew house because you were just you know the whole time and you're just like tearing it apart you know so you guys are so malleable i think that it's you guys have a lot of opportunities specifically since albuquerque is trying to modernize yeah if they modernize. please continue to do so i don't know about the bus lane jesus i was right? coming down here i seen that i was like oh now I get one lane. Oh my gosh, you guys got to see it. Central in Albuquerque. If you're not from here, you may not know what I'm talking about, but you will if you ever come here. <laughs> one well, we lane. all have hovercrafts that will work. Perfect. That's it. Yeah, you know. <laughs> no, that's that's what they're thinking. We're just gonna know. teleport. Hovercrafts. <laughs> <laughs> Baseboards. And we make really good blue meth. That's all they know about Albuquerque. Oh, <laughs> right, oh, right. Breaking, breaking back. No breaking back. <laughs> Uh, no, no, we don't make. We no, don't, I love Albuquerque. Do not endorse at all. No, do not. Yeah. No, but uh, you know, we did. We we did do a comic con. I wasn't able to get an interview with anybody, but we went in as a Perch of Birds, and we oh, were able nice. to look around. They had the uh, uh, Breaking Bad RV out front. Oh right, 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 right. It was good. You know, for what it's worth, I'm sure it brought tourism. Still does. So you were an extra on Breaking Bad. Right? Yeah, I was an extra on. Yeah, I haven't seen that episode because like she plays like a crackhead or something, I and played, I don't want to see her like I that. Did. You know, what I I'm looked saying? pretty I don't want to see you like that. Yeah, horrible. <laughs> so I'm like, you know, I don't yeah. need that bitch. It was like a whole three seconds. It was pretty awesome. <laughs> wow. Well, I watched it and I loved it, so I'd, I'd, I'd have to go back to remember the exact scene. It took me a long... There's a lot of that, like six seasons, man. I'm not a... <laughs> we're talking about this. I'm not too much on TV. I watch a lot of movies, yeah. but like Disney movies. And like I like to have the mode of like sit down and let's... I want to watch 101 Dalmatians because it reminds wow. me of being four, you know? And like, yeah, right. oh, <laughs> you know, that's all. I don't really watch a lot of TV. So people ask me. I have no idea. Bright came out, Will Smith. I have no idea. It's supposed to be popular. The internet talks about it. The internet talks about it. That's all that matters. So if we were to find <laughs> you guys on this internet that we speak of, where would we find you guys? What's your guys' website? What's the easiest way to find out? You find us on Facebook. Facebook? Moonhatband.com. Uh, Moonhatband.com. Okay. And yeah, it's still all- a little, it's under construction, but it's there. But you can, cl- you can link to UTAP. Oh, you can get the whole album on YouTube. Or you can listen to the whole thing on YouTube. Yeah, on right, YouTube. that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was YouTube. on YouTube. Mm-hmm, that's mm-hmm. awesome. Amazon, yeah, you subscribe. can download. Mm-hmm. Okay. And you can buy a CD too. Absolutely. On yeah. Amazon. Okay. Like buy a, a physical one if you want yeah. it. Yeah, that's what we got Support right here. Support your funk activity <laughs> in your vicinity. Oh, absolutely. I don't, you know what, man? I just installed a Bluetooth-only player in my truck, so I'm going to have to get home. Cool, man. I'm gonna di- I, it's going to get digitized. Know, I would like to know my... what your right favorite on. song is. Oh, man. You know? I have my favorites. Like, there's this instrumental that's wrote for her father named Kajori. I really yeah, like that Yeah, my dad one. died it's kinda like in a, 2013. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a little mm-hmm. instrumental Kajori. dedicated Kajori, to her father. Kajori, that's him. What does that mean? That's his last name, and that's he went by name. that first name as his first name. That's unique enough. Yeah, yeah exactly. He's one of the coolest people I've ever met, dude. Yeah. He's an abstract awesome pan he's just cool abstract expressionist yeah. painter yeah Amazing. and he drummed for like for a minute yeah a minute and that made such an impact on me you got to meet him did, did you, you ever meet him? no i never met no, him. no you never you met did. him but yeah. he played his brushes I, yeah <laughs> chances <laughs> yeah the brushes he's breeding man. drummers at his house from he's got a <laughs> breeding drummers <laughs> let's talk about this Musicians, got some more musicians <laughs> coming up so you get the pipeline. Your kiddos play? Uh, yeah, I got two sons. My oldest one plays drums. Okay. The okay. other one plays a cello. Wow, that's awesome. Whole, so I'm yeah. trying to bridge those two together, get some kind of metal cello. Totally. Damn, yeah, man. So all you got We're... to do is buy some distortion pedal and some delay. Yeah. Wow. This is some groundbreaking shit going on. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I'm digging this one. Yeah. No, it's cool how, they, how it gets passed on. That's that's what it's sure. all about. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I, I, don't, I don't have a father, so it was it was always through. You're you know, like, a, what, you're from a. Egg or something? An egg. I just popped right at aliens. What did we talk about? I thought we had an agreement that we wouldn't talk about me getting I dropped off eggs. before I got I here. I said you came from an egg. I didn't say <laughs> I said you have a dad. I have to be my bit of a hatch to us on. You I, know what I'm saying? I, no, but I, uh, uh, I, I, no, I didn't. So the things that influenced me even the littlest to get me even to this point, mm. and it's mostly music that we like to oh, bring on the podcast, was from other people, but they were usually friends of mine's dads that were like, so I was talking about drummers, my co-host who's not here, but his dad was a drummer, nice. punk drummer, and I, I learned the... 
just that basic, you know, because nice. I would like just hit the shit, you know, until he came in. He's like, no, he throw at you. You know, <laughs> and once we got it, it was awesome. And then and then from there, like that bridged into, I mean, I, I just scream. That's the seed sh- right there, sing. man, you know. That's all I do. That's how it gets planned, man. Somebody just shows yeah. you something and you yeah. roll with it. Yeah, and we try and we try to like not make it into a thing where uh, at my house, I'm not like pointing at anything in particular, but my son, my seven-year-old, wants to start doing piano lessons now. So this cool. is... This has been the newest, so we have him here too. Nice. Hey, man, and stick oh, with boy. it, even when it gets hard. Yeah. And if it's, it's too easy, it's usually better on the other side. And if it's too easy, you're practicing the wrong thing. You're, you're looking at a bunch <laughs> of musicians right now that play <laughs> music, sons, and they're all telling you it's possible, man. It absolutely yeah, is man. possible. And anybody out Especially there? Especially now, this is the best time to start playing music while you're young. Yeah. I'm not saying you can't learn when you're older, but there's just a lot less distractions. I mean, and even then, I think it's just like the the glass empty instead of glass half full you know i think you, know, I you want can learn when you're empty, older too because you know i think yeah, you right, can learn right. when you're older too it's the time spent you know yeah. and what you learn because it's so much easier to learn now than when i was coming up you know i learned at concerts being in the front row getting crushed now you can go on youtube and learn the chords and you can have people i mean you can Small advance foot, if you want to advance it's there the information mm-hmm. is all sure. there. it's, it's really, amazing now yeah. it's like almost pisses me off a little bit <laughs> met a lot of girls though that way oh, i was trying to get out the way i'm trying to see the guitar player right, right. <laughs> trying to learn have a notebook out bro you're yeah, hitting my no, arm oh, man, I did, but i what did i, I would go to concerts and learn like oh that's how you do that that's man. awesome man so 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 where did you get your start at where did you get your your musical start we didn't get we didn't I get actually that. played piano when i was a kid how Yes. Piano. And See? it was hard at times, and I got through it, and, it, and then I was like, you know, oh, I'm not going to do this anymore. And then when I was 16, I really wanted to play the bass. And I didn't have a bass, but my friend's boyfriend did. Mm-hmm. And so he was like, oh, I'm going to teach you to play the bass. And then something happened, like the amp blew, and that was the end of that. And I always said something about, oh, in another life, in another life, I'll play the bass, you know, that'll happen. And... um and then, like 13 years ago, this guy handed me a bass. He said, here, take this home. Oh, and this little amp. Take that home, too. Wow. And it just, like, transformed my life. There's no better way to start, it totally though. Like, that's jumping into the deep my end. Life. That's cool. It was crazy. So I was, did... like, not anticipating playing with other people. I was all by myself going, oh, this is a great instrument. I don't, <laughs> you know, I didn't think of it as accompanying or anything. It was What just... were you playing? To practice, to learn. All of the lines I ever heard that I loved. Super Freak, you know, like I wanted to learn Green Eye, like all of this old funk that I just carried around without realizing it. Because when I danced, I always went, like move my mouth to the bass. Okay. And was always like making a Drawn bass lines. It. Sure. Like with my mouth okay. while I was dancing to music. And so... um I think I just was like, oh, I'm going to make all that stuff happen on these strings now. You know, so <laughs> that's all that happened. But that, but, and, and that legitimately just led to eventually... I don't know how that? that happened. Like, this guitar player, like, I can't even understand how he came over and said, hey, you're playing bass. Like, I don't remember mentioning this to anybody. Yeah. But somehow, then a drummer was over, and then there was a jam happening, and then over time... Yeah, I, you know, just started playing with different musicians, and then this all happened. And, um, yeah, I met I met Cookie in 2006. Okay. And then you guys were actually dating. I think that I met him at this venue that doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, well, at his me. gig, but she he says it was me. my gig. The oh, truth Mr. comes out. <laughs> oh, I'll teach you how to play bass. Was, was, uh-huh. she the one, was she the one girl you were actually moving everybody out of the way to see on stage? It's a different thing, <laughs> right? I'm, I'm, that was I'm, like that. Full circle, it was kinda, it kinda, I think nah. it was your gig, honestly, yeah. God. It was a set break, and yeah. we started talking. That's cool. Okay, and then and then yeah. you guys you guys have a kiddo together. We have a yeah. child. Is this the next prodigy? Is this what we're? He can, he can definitely. Man, he can you, like, you guys realize you guys have like enough name. people. He's the leader of the, the free world, man. He's <laughs> he's a trip. <laughs> he's awesome though. He plays drums. Yeah, he plays really well. And, okay, and he's a, and he croons. He's a crooner, dude. He's a crooner. He's like crooner. one of the most soul ballad like putting okay. his hand in the air and singing. Oh wow. Okay, yeah. you guys said that you guys go to your 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 church goers, right? You guys are are you are to me. Okay. He plays bass at his church. Sure. Okay. So that's and then does he play there too? Does he ever sing? No, he hasn't been. He hasn't played in church. Okay. Yeah. Well, actually, he he's gone and sang with the choir a couple of times. But you know, if he's interested, he's welcome to sure. do that. Mm-hmm. I, I I see you guys being a super. That's super cool to like get somebody started in something like that. You know what I mean? Because that's. You don't practice though. I'm on him. Like you know what? You better go play your drums. So something <laughs> might happen to you. 
<laughs> Get off your iPad, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's cool though. He's he really he's really talented. That's cool. Okay, yeah. so you guys have have prodigies afoot. It's gonna happen. There's gonna be like moon hats, me Mars hat. <laughs> <laughs> right? Totally. He actually yeah. named the band, dude, after one of his books. He's all he had this. Yeah, book he about, did name the band. Yeah, moon hat. He named the band. Oh, okay, and what does moon hat mean, man? We didn't even get to moon that. With like, hat on it. Sure, straight it's up. From that, it's from the uh, good on paper. A children's okay. book <laughs> by Frank Ash. A children's book by Frank Ash. Happy wow. birthday, Moon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm sure that's that sounds very funny. Nice. Nice. <laughs> okay, that's right. Like, yeah, that's where that, the name came from. I get like an internal smile when I read <laughs> yeah, that book. That's it's awesome, all man. Warm that's and so it don't cool. hurt nobody. It's not like you know, moon. Deaf Moon or. And yeah. he actually came up with a logo <laughs> recently yeah. that I think that we're gonna apply because it's so simple. It's strong. Like we were talking about logos, you know, and logos. The simpler is sometimes they're they're really powerful. This is very and, this is very seventies though. Like I, yeah, that's that, what I feel that, like. But I'm there's like, this I'm, logo he just yeah. recently came up with. I'm like, wow, that's really strong. You know, and that's like turning him to a marketer or anything. But we do talk about logos a lot because he's well, you have more to of a in this day and age though. Yeah. I mean, you guys got to be yeah. uh, something recognizable for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And yeah. it's like he's fascinating. It's like, what's that? It's like, whoa, that's that. You know, that swish or whatever. It's like, look at that image. Like that's kind of amazing that we can all like respond to this. What makes that or Ozo Motley? damn i love their look you know he's like gorgeous sure because it looks like it's older than it is <laughs> right, <laughs> right right yeah right? yeah well and, and then it looks you know to be honest with you like i wouldn't have known i couldn't have gauged how old you guys were is that terrible to say that because i wouldn't have you know the style where you guys are at like this is such a there was a bluegrass band that i interviewed it was silver, oh, silver string band yeah and i i until i got on their facebook i hadn't even known what they look like you know and i was like oh man okay so these are younger cats but to see that it's it's still going mm -hmm, on since mm -hmm, it mm -hmm. the era that it was actually what it was you know it's heyday i guess you know do you guys feel like there's anybody else doing that kind of stuff like uh who did uptown funk what's his name Bruno Mars. Bruno Mars, do you feel like he's legitimate? We listen funk? to that all the time. That song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <so. That's> the, <laughs> do you, like, uh, what no, do you think? I think he's awesome. But awesome. do you think that there's more more he 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 would be one of the bigger names representing funk nowadays? Or do you feel like that's more pop? You know, I mean, I feel like he's, he's a little more pop than when he started, yeah. for sure. But I mean, you guys play actual funk. You know, it's good I shit. I think he know. grew up on it. I think it's part of what he did, who he is. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? You he can see it. You know, then I sometimes I feel like people are faking the funk too. You know, it's like a payday. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like Steffi Mills was on the show and she was saying about R and B, like, not to get racial, but she's like, they don't want R and B from us. They want R and B from more of a friendly face and something that's more, of, you know. And okay, so friendly. I don't know who is Stephanie Mills. See, see, I don't know who that is. <laughs> I don't know who that is. I know. She's a, she's a singer. Is she? But is she is she black or is she white? She's black. Okay. So, so she was saying that she that she would it, nowadays it would sell better if it came from a white person. Basically, that's Damn. what she was saying. That's heavy. And and it's and if you listen to the radio these days, you don't hear. I mean, besides we have Drake and a few hip hop artists, you don't hear a lot of the R and B artists. Like, like for instance, Mint Condition's lead singer Stokely just put out a new album. Okay. Listen to it. It's awesome. He's amazing. an amazing musician. Yeah. Okay. But he doesn't get played. You know, we don't hear him on the radio here. There, there's you know? a group called, Dub I think it's Double X or Triple X, and Internet's going to eat me for not knowing it, but I think that's what their name, but they're like a gospel slash hip hop, like almost yeah. directly crisscrossing to each other. Like it's almost cursing with like gospel singing. It's wow. the weird, yeah. And, but the crossover for it to me is this result of 2017, 2026, you know, the, the day, the, the day we are in, you know what I mean? And I, I, I think what's what's interesting is like you said the way the media portrays it the way that it brings it oh, along yeah, it can man. bring so many questions into as to what the what what is the reasoning behind it but I think when you guys hear music like you guys have and enough people create community to promote it you know like yeah that's the only way you can get popular anymore yeah you gotta be you know, heard you, you gotta be have you gotta have somewhere you could be heard because there's so much beautiful music in the world and it's sad that some things are just get pumped into our minds and heavy rotation you know what I'm saying so we don't. If you really want to find something, you have to go seek it out. You do. You know, and you there's can't, so much more you know, access. Because you already have things that just are like right, right. pumped into us 24-7. Yeah. Like, sure. You know. Well, I, I, you know, and I've talked about this before. I'm, I'm going to start beating this up on the podcast. But I, there, there's this concept that I've read about where the Beatles kind of started the whole pop thing with their the the style that they, that they play. And that structure of song that the majority of their earlier poppy stuff is what is now like it's like the four beat you know like the real mm -hmm. it's almost the same shit all the Hit time chords yeah 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 you know and 
Uh, I think that when you guys come up with something, that's what I like about reggae bands a lot because a lot of them are doing these huge nine, ten piece bands and mm-hmm. they're doing stuff like Slightly mm-hmm. Stupid has like a 10 to 11 member band. They're doing a lot of horns. They're doing a lot of change ups. Yeah, but they're not thinking about playing, being played on the radio. They're playing music for themselves, I believe. But it was, I mean, it was their fans that pulled yeah, them up. Yeah, you know, yeah, and, and they that's have what a I fan think. base. So, you know, that, yeah, that totally. has something. It's kind of supersedes it, it all, you know? Totally. Yeah, yeah. You know? Well, I hope you guys get like a million likes because you guys are on the podcast. <laughs> right on, I'll try right to jump into the millennial. Birds, right yeah, on. you yeah. know, so. Yeah, man, this is awesome. Thank you so much for having us. Man. Yeah, well, and I think, uh, Zoom, we didn't talk about where you guys started, man. You've been playing for 37 years, you said? 37 say? years, yeah. Damn, bro. So that's. Full 120. I started playing when I was seven. I <laughs> did my first club date when I was 16, and I've been doing it ever wow. since. That's badass, man. So you're, okay, and you're from Albuquerque? Yeah, born and okay. raised. Okay, so so when you started playing, like you were, you just jumped right in with with high school friends. What was the story on the? Actually, I was in high school playing with college kids. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So you were you were that that cool young dude. I was. Man. I that, thought I was the coolest <laughs> guy in school, really, because I was hanging nice. out with these older guys. But That's yeah. cool. Everybody's shaking your hand in the hallways, man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, and that's kind of what, what it's funny that you say that, because I feel like drumming, man, it's, it, that is a very, uh, like, you can be a guitarist and a drummer. You can be a singer and a drummer. You can be a bassist and a drummer, you know, because drums, to me, it's, at its core, it's what a lot of what the other instruments and even the singing are doing is just, you know, right. keeping the time. But uh, they usually say, like, the quiet, you know, kind of kind of tough guy is always the dude, you know. Uh, so my co-host him and his b- father both play the drums, right. right? And I think it's interesting because they taught each other that. And then you said, your boy drums, mm-hmm. right? Do you feel like he has the same personality that you do or is he much different than you? Uh, he's driven in his own way. Okay. He's got a whole different style of music that he's into, you know? He's sure, really sure. into the prog rock thing. Okay. Um, That's interesting. Does he have a band that he plays with in Albuquerque? He's got friends from high school he plays with, but I don't think they're actually a band or a you know, they just do it for fun. They just right hang now. out and do some shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah, in the garage. You know, it's 10 o'clock. It sounds good, though. Yeah. yeah turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> Neighbors are calling. Yeah, yeah. So that's cool, man. So you just you, you jumped right in. You started playing music. And then yeah, I'm, I'm sure that that ultimately led to you meeting one of these guys. Yeah, you know, I've played just about every style. Um, but being in this band is great because the very first band that knocked my socks off was Tower Power. Okay. I was like maybe 10 when I heard them. Yeah. First time I heard a band, right, didn't understand what the drummer was doing. Yeah. And it blew me away. And since then, I've been obsessed with those guys. Sure. So to be in this band with horns, singers, playing funk, it's great, man. Do you feel like it challenges you compared to typical music? Because we were talking about that earlier about how it's not like it's you, you are under the microscope, even live, because you carry that beat, man. Well, Funk's, it is a challenge. Because uh. like you said, you know, when you play fast, it's, you can cover your mistakes. Sure. It's actually, in some ways, it's easier to play fast. Sure. To play slow is really hard. Right. Just been hitting the wrong drum the whole time. And you're like, they didn't notice. No, it's cool. It was really fast. Like, right? Like, they were moshing still. Nobody noticed. <laughs> Drop a cool, stick. Bro. Nobody knows. Don't be mad at yourself. No. I drop a stick in this band. Everybody knows. <laughs> right. Hold on, oh, everybody. Because yeah, he's going to yell at somebody. I mean, I, I, yeah, it can get kind of be you know, like, Yeah, tempos. Uh, tempos. Well, yeah. I mean, Pocket, but man. it can be. It, yeah. So, uh, so when you guys play on on uh, uh, on shows now, do you guys ever bring kids up or anything? You guys ever do anything like that? Like, do you guys ever bring guests up? I know we were talking about yeah. other people trying to jam yeah. out and shit. Yeah, like, we do have some MCs that come up and do stuff with us sometimes. Okay. Yep. yep. I invite my friends sometimes. Nobody shows up. That's not true. <laughs> I like you know because we try to get a guitar player up in every now and then just because. We don't really have a guitar player. I go back and forth. Uh, he's a guitar player. He says we don't have one, but he's. But you know what I mean. I go back and forth. Yeah, any keyboard player. Sometimes it'd be nice to have a guitar player up there with us too. But sure. Do you? Does that challenge you to do guitar and singing at the same time? Like, is that a pain in the ass, or is that something? No, that, I like. No? I like. I just like to be able to move I, around. I don't know how you guys do that. Spider the same thing. Like he can just. I like to move. Around. It's fun, man. Do it. it I I, and I think you know, if you play different instruments, you get inspired to write differently. That's what I dug about Prince because Prince wrote on every instrument. You know, sure. you could tell the ones he wrote on guitar, the ones he wrote on piano or drums. Sure. You know? Although I was thinking, in terms of kids, and and one of the things that I really noticed was how drawn to the left hand I was when I played piano. I only know that now looking back but i think it's like you're saying you know there's one instrument you might be drawn to and like seeking that out for your you know looking at the your kid and saying hey what is it that are you do you like that higher violin sound or do you like that you know where are you at in registers like that's sure. important you what know get, to like, what gets your what gets you first you, you get know? those goosebumps when you hear it right like yeah. what are you drawn to you know so i think that that's like really kind of important to notice so i gotta ask them just just because i i listen to these cats a lot do you guys listen to the black keys at all yeah. you guys listen to them you guys yeah. like the black Keys? yeah mm-hmm. i i there was this feud they had with jack white and i and i thought it was the funniest thing because he tried to say that black keys were pulling from his style quite a bit 
and so the minimalistic type of thing is that what he's saying it was an email he wrote to somebody somebody pulled the email and it was kind of without his permission yeah one of those crappy gossipy things nobody cares specifically the artists involved because they're not like you know metallica and limp biscuit or somebody or who is it creed and limp biscuit they had a feud and they tried to fight you know it wasn't nothing like that <laughs> like they did it like gentlemen you know but like i i have heard of the the skills of jack white i know the skills of, uh, uh you know um that he has on an album but to see a man literally play 15 instruments on stage that's a a, a testament to seeing somebody really be in their you know their genius and they're deep in that shit you know and do you, do you guys when you um look at another instrument do you guys look at it as like uh like i'm gonna start using this in moon hat or is it just something you play with like where does that line get crossed there was a cat in silver string that was able to pick up a it wasn't a mandolin. It was a little guitar. But he'd been playing it for two years, and the dude is already ukulele. like... Ukulele. Maybe. And I don't remember what it was. I kept saying it wrong, and I'm not going to try again. It was, See, it was a little guitar. <laughs> but but, but my, my question is, so you, you guys individually, you're playing what you can play cross between guitar, cross between vocals. Is there anything else that you guys are playing with where you're, you may... Uh, oodles of woe maybe you put that in there would that be like any other instruments you yeah 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 you you messing with something else i mean well, your you kids that apparently the mess cellist, with you know you were playing with for yeah like like you're saying like different like songwriting art. yeah like like jack jack white will get up there and he'll play a a an actual song like he would play you know food for thought but he might try a different instrument through it or oh, okay. he might, yeah, you know yeah. what i'm saying and do you guys do you guys different get to a settings spot? like yeah like you're live and you're like dude i'm gonna try this ukulele now with this whole jam and just <laughs> see what happens you know because i've been i've been funky at home scooting back and forth in front of the mirror jamming out you know and now it's or whatever in the jam sessions but you get on stage you know and you yeah, do that yeah. yeah do you guys ever do shit like that is it like something that you bridge into I play bass. No, I don't exclusively. actually exclusively. No, no. But I've heard I've heard songs transform from piano, like the the lead instrument being piano versus guitar with sure. with cookie. And that is gonna change the flavor of the whole song, which then sort of shifts everything. And um like for instance, no deposit. No deposit it has a different flavor on the keyboard. And um so that's that's an example of what you're saying. Well, yeah, and the reason why I said the 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 difference in the two bands and the feud and all that is because those guys are a two man band, Black Keys, and and yeah. they play literally one instrument each. I think they sub in on bass, you know, somewhere because it's two guys, but they play this music and it's so um, all over the place. I mean, they do so many. I mean, they've got like six albums out, you know what I mean? And it's two dudes playing the same instruments, you know. And Jack White, he runs off on this thing, and like, of course, I think they're almost two different animals, you know what I mean? So I think it's interesting to kind of see. Um, the fact that you guys, as much as you have that diversity, you guys still stick to your own and it sounds as good as it does, you know, and I think that you guys have nothing but like room to grow. Like you can get into like this whole, uh, oh, we just said his damn name, the Uptown Funk guy. Bruno Mars. Bruno Mars, you know, and, and not, and I'm not saying go mainstream, but right. you know, you guys can probably grow into, uh, something that ends up making funk more mainstream. You know what I mean? Yeah, Even yeah, if yeah. it's just freaking yeah. in Albuquerque, yeah, going yeah. to where we say Colorado, you know what I mean? Like well, I, there's so I many different kinds happening. of funk. I'm thinking of, I always said this about, um, American slang band with no name and moon hat. Like we've got different sort of, um, bringing different cross genres of funk to say hip hop or funk to soul or, funk to rock you know and it's like those are cro it's funk but it's got yeah like band with no name band with more no name is more on the hip-hop side sure. we've got the soul and r&b side more you know i feel that i mean that's where i'm drawn to you know when like when it gets going and it's like more church which is it's like i could come into a gig and say oh shit you know I don't know, something's going on in my life and it's not feeling that great by the end of a gig I always gone. feel good so you leave it all out there is what I you're just, saying yeah because the good. music is transforming and so that that's the soul part for me. Sure. You know, you but then you bring an MC way. up and and it's got a whole other energy because that's the percussive vocals, you sure. know, that have some, that you can't like with Zap Mama, you know, their first album voice is the original instrument and it's always going to be the first thing we're responding to is voice, you know. And so that's why I think, you know, sometimes hearing someone MC is is very powerful for people, you know, and then you've got the rock where it's just like, you know, and it's right. some other part of your energy is. Well, let me ask you this. What are you listening to now? What's on your iPod? What's on your MP3 player? <laughs> what are you jamming? Besides so the Perch of Birds podcast? <laughs> whoop, whoop. <laughs> <laughs> and wet stuff. Right and wet and oh, wet right. stuff. Okay. The podcast Katie Neely does. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Totally. Okay, that's what it's called. Is yeah, wet stuff. Wet stuff. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Shout out. We'll get that yeah, in there. Yeah, it's wet all stuff, about art sure. and business, which is not always like it's like water and oil for some people, but not. It doesn't have to be, right? Right. Right. That's right. It does not have to be. <laughs> um, I I mean I you know and it's uptown funny. funk. I know uptown that's funk. There. Yeah, okay. right. Uptown funk. <laughs> and then um, I was listening to Julian earlier. That's our son's name. He's um. 
he was putting together a hook that I have in my head from the 80s with a hook that's the Fox song. And I'm like, what? And it's all like, whatever, like, mishmash of all these hooks was coming up. That kind of goes through my head. That's not what I'm listening to. But that was like... That was a whole nother so level. Glad this is like, I love it. No, I love it. That was a whole nother level. That's that, everybody dance now. She's like, now what I put in the, the headphones day? What after do, she okay, heard the what? music in her song. Yeah, okay. I got no, it. No, and then um, no, it's like I I listen to what pops into my head, and we have, you know, I'll pull over and be like, I have to hear that song that's just in my head right now. I don't even know where it came from, you know, and it's a pop song that has a hook, or this guy, um, we call him the Funk Meister. Um, he brought over some Christian McBride. This jam is amazing. And it's just all of this like West Coast, you know, music. And it's kind of jazz, funky jazz. Oh, that's, I, lo- I love that's how far down the side. rabbit hole you took this. That oh, is amazing. God. <laughs> that was, that was yeah, good. No, yeah, so, yeah. so I feel like you really, you really listen on a mo- I'm the same way with music. Like I listen to a lot of stuff. <laughs> I mean, that's what's led me to be so eclectic in how oh, I choose podcasts. Like, I have to hear some Baroque or, you know, right now. I'd love to hear yeah. some Bach. Well, I'll go, yeah, you know, I'll go, like, I'll go from like Hester Preen over to like John Lee Hooker and then I'll kick back over to, you know, I don't, uh, uh, Chet Faker, you know, and I'm like, I, my head starts to hurt a little bit sometimes because I just need to take it, set it down because I can't get like satisfied, you know, and I'm just like chopping through the thing and weaving yeah, in traffic. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't play my phone in traffic. No, I don't, no, I no. Never there's do that. something to that though. And I'll tell you what I noticed. I like to hear the ambience of a room. Like I was noticing real quiet somewhere recently i was like wow because there is so much i mean that's one of kevin's uh albums digital haze because there is so much going on auditorily for us right now i need a break from it and then when i come fresh to a song it's that much better sure sure it's like it's like uh uh what do they give you between uh wines cheese or what were we supposed to have between something yeah right? you get something to offset no 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 what's that called <laughs> Yeah, you're supposed to have something like in between. A, I, uh, yeah, but that. but it, there, there's Clean changes. So, so you Clean have a very palette. eclectic choice of music on you. And Cookie, you have a. Uh, I'm sure oh, you guys like ride music, together, man. man. You don't. You don't do. Oh, it? I know music. I don't listen to nothing. Like it's it. the music like in your it. head as well, right? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> no, I like a lot of different stuff. What do you listen to now, though? What's on the podcast? Or now, oh, Jesus. On, yeah. What's on the? I've been listening to Bootsy's new album. Yeah. Bootsy's new album. Yeah. Worldwide Funk. That's okay. nice. Okay. And I listen to Glenn Hughes. You ever heard of Glenn Hughes? He used to sing in the band. I think so. He used to sing with Thin, not Thin Liz, excuse me. He sang with Deep Purple for a minute. Okay. Great bassist, vocalist. Okay. Glenn Hughes is bad. And he's got a new and one. And I like Angelo Moore from Fishbone. He does a lot of different projects. Okay. He did a project with, um, remember Dokken? That sounds remember familiar. Remember rock band Dokken? George Lynch, the guitarist. They did an album together. That's Spiders really, bobbing his head. I don't know who that is. <laughs> they did an album together. He's just I'm he's uncultured, just all, man. He's all over. Every one of these, I'm like, I don't know. I'm going to look oh, it up. Man, Write it down. It he's the lead singer of Fishbone, too. Angelo Moore. That's why check this is out. a good podcast. Because Angelo Moore, from dude. It too. Yeah. Angelo Moore, and, okay. And um, Kamazi Washington. Okay. Oh, and yeah. you do mostly CDs? How do you guys do this? Uh, Bluetooth? On your, how do you guys, how do you listen? I listen on YouTube mostly. Really? Okay. Or I'll buy some if I really like it. Sure. You know, but that's that's basically what I use the internet for is to listen, seek listen out to music. music. Yeah, I went to hear a concert, a sit down concert, and of Rhiannon Giddens, and she blew my mind. And one of the reasons she blew my mind is she had so much integrity in her lyrics. And so you were thinking, you know, what's the positivity that's brought with with this music? Well, one of the things that crosses my mind is that, the, especially with the lyrics, I feel like these lyrics are not stepping away from the truth and trying to skirt around the edges. He goes right to it, which might be a little negative at first, but because he's going toward it and speaking of, what, of what's really happening, you feel released. Right, it's more, feel, it's more realistic. There's not so many euphemisms right, and dancing around the daisies like, and shit. Sure, sure, you sure. You know what? It is You get the message. Yeah. yeah. And it's positive. That's good. Mm-hmm, That's mm-hmm. huge. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and then Zoom, what you got, man? What you listen to? What's on man, the... Man, nothing in particular. Just whatever... Whatever turns on that day, you know? Yeah? Okay. Yeah. So you, you even look Katy Perry like a boss? You don't you know, care? I'm older. I'm over uh, Katy Perry. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> Sorry, Cookie. Oh, man. Uh, the fireworks are just not for you. Oh, yeah, nothing in particular, you know? Yeah. Uh, just whatever pops in. That's cool, man. Well, I mean, and I've, I kind of feel the same way. I, I have to constantly, I use Google Music, and I, I like download all the music I want, you know, because I have awesome cell phone provider that I can't use the internet when I drive around. I drive a lot for my, you know, to get to, to and from my job. So I'll download podcasts, I'll download albums, and I try to grab 
there's like a new and noteworthy section, whatever, you know, and I'll grab whatever's happening. Joe Satriani put out a new album. I was like, damn, mm-hmm. he's still doing it, you know, and I, I Matter pulled of fact, Glenn out. Hughes is on that album. Oh, no shit. He does yeah, the vocals yeah, on there yeah. and plays bass. Cool. I had I don't think I, I paid attention enough. I just have it on my stereo in my in my thing, but it's all Bluetooth, you know. So yeah. I'm gonna go home and get me some moon hat uh digitized for sure. I gotta have that happen. Well, thank you guys for coming out and doing right this, on. man. Thank you, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Is there us. anything coming up that we can talk about that's, I mean, we're going to have this out in like three weeks from now, so I don't want to say uh, too soon. To book, start booking. Well, so. St. Clair Winery would be the place to look, especially when the warm weather comes, because we'll play once, maybe, well, sometimes twice a month at St. Clair, once a month, basically, throughout every warm month of the year because it's outside it's a great venue sure and, people can um, dance people like can dance said. yeah uh. we'll be at marble you know and especially all of these venues where they have a large stage outside because we're such a big band so that's sure. we'll be back at jewel i'm sure i just can't give you specific dates but facebook the, we can yeah, we can also see you guys at, okay. Band.com. okay and um drafty kilt drafty kilt on the sixth right next saturday i'll be doing a Next Saturday is what Little day? Thing. I've got to so be honest with you guys. I have kids. I don't go out very much. Yeah, what is right. Drafty Kilt? What the hell is that? <laughs> it's a brewery. It's a brewery, it's a brewery here in town. Okay. Okay. I'm going to be over there Saturday. Shout out Drafty Saturday. Kilt. I just didn't know what you were. Cookie Eight Jones. Under the name Cookie Jones. Cookie Jones. Yeah, okay. Cookie Jones. That's his Jones. solo name. So, yeah. Okay. All right, man. So, we'll definitely have to check you guys out. And thank you guys very much for thank talking you, to us. And it's Katie Neely. Thank you for having us out here. It's your beautiful art gallery. Please come yeah. check her out. Yeah. Come, yeah. come and uh, look at this beautiful artwork. She's always doing something different. There's always a different project that's up. Different uh, fundraiser, typically. Charity. Awesome. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Moon Hat. Thank Thanks, you, man. guys. Can make you cold So I